until now we have discussed uh, rcnn and we saw how spp net uh, architecture improves on top of it now this paper fast uh, fast rcnn improves on top of the spp net architecture the network you are seeing here is basically the spp net architecture now let's see step by step what all changes fast rcnn did on top of the spp net architecture the first change that they did was was in the special permit pooling layer in uh, spp net they did uh, three or four levels of pooling that is this uh, level 0 level 1 level 2 and uh, practically they even used level 3 pooling in fast rcnn what they did was they got rid of all these levels of pooling instead they used a single uh, level of 7 by 7 grid okay so here uh, in the in this image uh, the examples that they have shown is of a 1 by 1 grid then 2 by 2 then this is 4 by 4 grid so instead of having multiple levels they used a single grid that is of uh, dimension 7 by 7 So this was the first change uh, that they did uh, to the network and they renamed this kind of pooling to ROI pooling. And uh, secondly, they experimentally found out that whether you are using the softmax for classification or the SPM, you are getting the same levels of accuracy. So instead of using both the networks, they just got rid of this uh, SPM classifier. Also here we can uh, see that the FC6 and FC7 layers were connected directly to the classification network and uh, for the bounding box regressor you connected the output of the special pyramid pooling directly but here what they did was they made these two layers common to both the classification and the bounding box regressor instead they added one fully connected network to both the layers both the classification and the bounding box regressors so here what happens is this fully connected layer will learn the weights specific to classification and this fully connected layer will learn the weights specific to the bounding box regression and uh, these two layers will be very common so that's another change and uh, here in the bounding box regressor one more uh, change is that instead of using the l2 loss they use the smooth l1 loss so basically what is uh, l1 loss if you have two numbers a and b how do you calculate the l1 loss you just take the mod of these two differences and uh, l2 loss you just square the differences and the uh, smooth l1 loss is basically a combination of these two losses that is if the mod of a minus b is uh, less than 1 they use this formula or if it is equal to 1 or greater than 1 they use this formula so why exactly what happens uh, practically if you take the l2 loss or l1 loss or smooth l1 loss uh, i have provided a link in the description if you are interested in the details but uh, this is uh, one one change that they did in the bounding box regressor also apart from this uh, usually when you take any network or feet or cnn anything the way you find in the network is you take the classification loss and then you back propagate this loss through the network and fine tune all the other layers once that is done they will train the bounding box regressor they will train only the fully connected layers for the bounding box regressors so usually it is a two step process when you are train the network it is usually a two step process but in rcnn and uh, spp net it is a three step process that is you you fine tune the network using the log loss then you train the svm classifier then you train the bounding box regressor but here in this network what they did was uh, also this is also they found out experimentally when you add up both the losses the classification losses and the bounding box regression loss and then use the combined loss to uh, back propagate through the network instead of just the classification loss you get a much higher levels of accuracy so this is what uh, they did and uh, one more advantage is that now you need not train the bounding box regressor separately so you have reduced the training stages from 3 in rcn and to just one stage training so that's a big advantage and moreover you are getting higher levels of accuracy so two advantages in this and uh, remember that when you are uh, calculating the loss or when you are fine tuning the network you are doing it on the roi proposals and not on the entire feature maps also when they fine tune the network they fine tuned it only up to convolution 3 layer third convolution layer they didn't fine tune the layer 1 and the layer 2 why is this the case we have already seen this in the initial layers like a layer 1 and a layer 2 your network learns some basic shapes textures and pattern and only after this only in the layer 3 or layer 4 onwards it will start learning some complex shapes so even if you fine tune uh, these two layers you won't get much change here you won't have much improvements in accuracy so there is no point unnecessarily spending time to train these two layers instead you can train the, from the layer 3 and the layer 4 onwards and get the same comparable levels of accuracy this uh, paper was basically set of experiments and uh, they had some conclusions and uh, they kept modifying the network based on the results so here in uh, spp net 
we were using images of five different scales to do all the processing instead of one but uh, experimentally they found that instead of one if you use five different scales you will get a 0.5% increase in accuracy but it will take four times longer so they just compromised on this and they got it of this five different scales and uh, they are using one single scale to do all the processing probably the the size of this image is uh, pretty large so that you can do the spp pooling here so that's one more change so these are the changes that was done on the fast rcna network on top of the spp net architecture and uh, lastly if you are thinking in terms of accuracy there is not much improvement on rcnn you get a 66% accuracy on fast rcnn you get 66.9 however though the amount of improvement in accuracy is uh, small the improvement that is seen in terms of the time taken to process is huge this network fast rcnn network is 146 times faster than rcnn so that's the biggest benefit of this spp net is around 22 to 24% uh, sorry 22 to 24 times faster than rcnn and this network is 146 times faster than rcnn so that's the biggest advantage of this network finally we have been having uh, this uh, discussion whether the dense sampling or the sliding window detector is uh, better or using the region proposal networks is uh, better and uh, one theory was that why the region proposal networks uh, were better was that it eliminates this background regions from the computation that is it will extract only the interesting uh, parts from the image and only passes these layers or uh, these regions for further processing and uh, that is how it it is eliminating some of the false positives from the network that is if you have if your fast rcna network had analyzed even the background regions it might have been possible that you had some false positives by eliminating these regions from processing you are able to get higher levels of accuracy so this is one theory as to why the region proposal networks are uh, better than the dense sampling networks and the same thing can be seen here if you are uh, using the alexnet architecture with uh, fast rcnn you by taking the top 1000 proposals from selective search you are getting around 58% accuracy even if you start increasing the number of proposals to 2000 the accuracy still improves and even at uh, 3000 the accuracy st is still high but only after this the accuracy will start dropping okay that's because if you are increasing the number of proposals you will start getting even the background regions for processing so that will start increasing your false positives if you start increasing the number of boxes your accuracy will start going down also what what experiment they did was at this stage after 2000 boxes they replaced the selective search with the dense sampling that is uh, sliding window detection and uh, here we can see that immediately the accuracy will start dropping unlike the selective search where the drop in accuracy is uh, somewhat uh, slow here we can see that the accuracy will start dropping drastically so this is consistent uh, with the intuition that we already had that the region proposals are much better compared to the dense sampling uh, techniques however at the end of the paper they make a statement basically they are asking a question is there a way is there a technique that will enable me to use the sliding window detector that is to use a dense sampling technique and get comparable levels of accuracy or maybe even more is there a way to do it what would be the advantage of doing that if you can do that then you can just eliminate this uh, region proposal networks so that will be the advantage of uh, using the dense sampling uh, techniques but is there a way so as of now as of this paper we don't have an answer we have to wait and see so that was about uh, fast rcnn in the next chapter from the next chapter onwards we'll be discussing faster rcnn